Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah to the Most High God. Today is the, the 12th of July. Hallelujah. 12th of July. We're on the second half of the year now. We just bless God for all He's doing, all He's done, all He's going to do. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you and thank you today, Lord, for this word that you have placed in my heart. For all of us, your children. Lord, I pray that we will get it. Hallelujah. That you give the revelation deep in the heart of your children today, Lord. The revelation of the awesomeness of your truth. And what you have done for your people. And crush the devil under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Colossians chapter 1. Beginning at verse 3. This is a powerful word because the Lord is so good to give us revelation. You know, let me, before I read this, I want to say this. That there are some people out there in the world today. Many people. Who down the scripture and they ridicule it they give it a low place okay and the Lord is not pleased with that because of the revelation that we get from his word every word every comma every period every dot you don't think those are important but I'm telling you they are important semicolons are important to to follow the Spirit of God in your heart leading you to the Word. Paul said to Timothy, bring me my coat when you come. Timothy, it's getting chilly out here. He said, bring the books, but especially the parchments. Especially those scrolls, the, the roll of Isaiah and Jeremiah. Paul wanted to get more revelation, more understanding from the Spirit of God by the written Word. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's written down. God had men write it down. Just like he had Paul write this word to the Colossians. And people who ridicule the word of God and place it on a low level. Okay. They are doing a disservice to the body of Christ. They are doing a disservice to the master and king, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus said... He searched the scriptures. He was talking to the Pharisees. He was talking to the religious crowd who were trying to justify their self by the word. But the Lord said, you won't come to me so that you can have eternal life. You won't come to me so that you can understand really what the word is saying. But we've come to the Lord now. We are filled with his spirit. And as we read Colossians over and over and over again, over the years, you get more revelation, more understanding because of the experience God has brought you through up to this point in your walk with Jesus. When you read Colossians again, you get more revelation. You see more understanding because the Holy Spirit's quickening it in us. Hallelujah. Or in the book of Ephesians, same thing, every book of the Bible and I'm telling you right now give God's Word a high place it says in 1 John chapter 5 that the Word hallelujah and the Spirit right and the Father are one that's what it says I'm gonna read that before we read this because it's important to, to I want to read that exactly as it says yeah right here in my big King James Bible because I'm telling you right now it's important that you read the right version too because a lot of people they're lying they're false teachers they use the New American Standard Version they use the Revised Standard Version okay now I'm telling you right now the King James Version is the version hallelujah now listen to this right here in 1 John chapter 5 hallelujah for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. 
These three are one. Amen? Hallelujah. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So we see that the Word became flesh, right? John 1. And dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Hallelujah. See. It's beautiful, the Word of God. Listen to Paul right here. Now this is important, okay? This is an important word because we are in a time right now where excuse me. We are in a time right now where people are anticipating we can feel something in the spirit we, we we can we can experience we're experiencing in our spirit man a great move of God that is materializing day by day I mean it, it doesn't look big in the world's eyes but I'm telling you God is doing something in secret in his people he is preparing his vessel okay his church in this hour here in America, where we've never experienced full-scale war on this land in our generation, okay, on this land, full-scale war, like the Civil War was during the North and the South when they were fighting in the 1860s, that's never been experienced by our generation here in this land. And I'm telling you, that's going to find people out chaos such as that will find people out will expose who are the true and who are not true and the Lord says do you have your sword ready is your sword sharpened today look at this revelation Paul's talking to the Colossians and he's telling them and he never met these people he never went there to preach someone else preached and they got saved and filled with the spirit and Paul was so excited to hear that he says, we give thanks, verse 3, to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Now, people are thinking today, they're anticipating something. And at this time of the year, they're always saying on the Day of Atonement, the 23rd of September this year, there's going to be some kind of event that's going to happen and catch people away or whatever, alien, fake alien invasion, all this. We've been hearing this for years, haven't we? But God says, look at my word, saints. God says, look at my word. Believe my word today. Hallelujah. Paul says he gives thanks, okay, to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Now, this word is written and recorded, and I'm telling you right now, this prayer that Paul's praying, it's for us too today. God's answering this prayer. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have, Hallelujah. And of the love which ye have to. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. To all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Whereof ye heard before in the word of, tru of the truth of the gospel. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world. And bringeth forth fruit. Ha <laughs> ha. It was bringing fruit in their lives, hallelujah, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth, hallelujah, and you knew the grace of God in truth, do you know the grace of God in truth today? As ye also learned of, of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, hallelujah, who is who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause, Paul says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Oh, hallelujah. Now, Look at this, beginning at verse 9, running through verse 17, is one continuous sentence. What that tells us is, it's a context. 
Now this is for the believer. Listen to this. I'm going to read it again. Verse 9. For this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See this is what we cry. We want this. We want it for you. We want it for us. We want it for the whole body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord. That you, saint, might walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might. According to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Oh, hallelujah! With joyfulness. See? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. Not according to us, not according to what we own or what we have or where we live or anything else. Or maybe what denomination we belong to. Or whatever. See. No. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. Unto all patience. Oh hallelujah. And long suffering. With joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the father. Which hath made us meet. To be partakers of the inheritance. Of the saints. In light. In light. Oh, hallelujah. In light. See, the Bible says in him is no darkness at all. He is the light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. See, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Darkness has a certain power. It's suspicion, it's covetousness, adulteries, fornications, all these wicked, vile things that come from the fallen heart of man, from the old nature. See, that's darkness, that's separation from God. Okay? Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. We're delivered from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. And hath translated us. Hallelujah. I just this really hit me. Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And so the Lord would say to us today, do you know? Do you really believe that I have translated you into the kingdom of my son? That's what the Father says to us. And we say, yes, Lord, I know it. And I believe it. And then the Lord comes back and says, then why are you talking and saying things that come from darkness? You see? Like when we get upset about something. Okay? Or it's too hot outside. Or any little thing, okay, from the old way. Remember back when you didn't know the Lord and you were just walking in the world and doing your own thing and how the conversations would go at work or whatever? Remember those times. Call to remembrance and say, you know, that's how I used to be. I don't, I'm not like that anymore. I'm in another kingdom now. I'm in the kingdom of His dear Son. I'm in the kingdom of light. I'm in the kingdom of power. Hallelujah. You see? See, the Lord is, is giving us strength and purpose and will right now to remember and to know that we are not of the kingdom of darkness any longer. Hallelujah! We are of the kingdom of His dear Son. Oh, the Son of His love. Hallelujah! Look at this. i got to read verse 13 again. Who hath delivered us, oh, hallelujah, from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son 
See, we are not come to the mountain that can be touched. Okay? That if an animal touched it, it was to be uh, thrust through with a dart. It was to be killed. We're not come to that mountain. We're not come to that city of Jerusalem over in the Middle East today. No, we're, we're come to the heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah. See, we, we are in God's kingdom. We're here on this earth. We're going through this pilgrim journey. And it's hard. Many times. It's tough. Making it through. Narrow way. But we're in the kingdom of his dear son. Jesus had it hard. Jesus didn't have it easy on this earth. Can you imagine having the full capacity of your brain and your mind and being able to read everybody's thoughts that's thinking things all around you, 100 people, 1,000 people, 5,000 people, and you can just read all their thoughts, and you know their pain, you know their suffering, you know what they're going through. I mean, like a book. That's how Jesus was. He was perfect. He was, he was not tainted by sin. He had the full human capacity of the human brain. Hallelujah. He didn't use 10%. He used 100%. And he, he experienced all that pain and all that suffering and all that hurt. He carried it with him. And he walked it out. Hallelujah. He was in the kingdom of light. He was always beholding the Father's face. And Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. He told Nathaniel, you're going to see the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. See? We don't even know, we don't even, we can't even begin to grasp the fact that holy angels are all around us all the time. Sharon made a post the other day about being in camp by God's ministers and how they're always around us. We don't even give it a thought, do we? Hardly. But I'm telling you right now, God says he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So don't wait to be translated. Okay, the Bible says he's already translated us. Hallelujah. See, but one day this earthly temple is going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Okay, if Jesus comes back while we're still walking on this terra firma right here, these, these bodies are going to be, they're going to be transformed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. It's going to manifest. And God spoke to me in 2006. He says, I'm going to break out of you. So I'm going to break out of you. That's what he said. Like I did my son on the Mount of Transfiguration. See, all the glory of his divinity, all the glory of God and his humanity and his divinity was just shining forth. Hallelujah. So the apostles knew he's the one. He's the one. And Moses and Elijah appeared to him and were talking to him about the work he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. What a mighty work it is. Hallelujah. And he accomplished it. He defeated the devil. And all the power of Satan. Hallelujah. And we don't have to walk in darkness. We don't. When we're tempted to complain, when we're tempted to get uh, discouraged about the way, we don't have to do that. We can say, Lord, I'm not going to get discouraged. Hallelujah. I've got your power in me. I've got your Holy Ghost in me, Father. And I'm going to walk in joyfulness. Hard as it is, and I know, I know, I'm God, God says, you know, that's good. I want to hear that from my people. I want my people to want to and desire to walk in the fullness all the time. And then the Lord allows circumstances and he shows us, you know, because we do complain. We do fall. We do say, Lord, I don't like this way. You see? But just tell the Lord you repent. Just repent and say, God, forgive me. And just keep going. Keep going with the Lord. And as we do that, we learn. I mean, we learn. We learn. We say, Lord, set a guard on our tongue and on our mouth, on our lips. That we do not speak ill-advisedly, Lord. But that words that come out of our mouth will be words of praise, honor, and thanksgiving, and glory unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. And just bless God. Now I'm going to read verse 13 one more time. Then I'm going to finish this sentence. This is all one sentence from verse 9 through verse 17. It, this, it's powerful, isn't it? Hallelujah. Powerful. Who hath delivered us, talking about the Lord, from the power of 
darkness. Okay? The power of darkness. Sin, death, hell, the grave. Delivered us. Hallelujah. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption. Oh, in whom we have redemption. See, we have redemption. We're not ready. You know, we're not waiting to get redeemed. We are redeemed. Hallelujah. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. Even the forgiveness of sins. Oh, praise God. We have been forgiven. Hallelujah. Our sins. By the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is the image. Hallelujah. Of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the top. He is the top. God in the flesh. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, the perfect one, the holy one. Oh, praise God, the one Isaiah saw seated upon his throne, high and lifted up. Oh, praise God. The one who Ezekiel saw just absolutely just surrounded, hallelujah, by emerald rainbows and, and just in this a sapphire throne. I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, almighty God in the flesh, hallelujah. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Oh, hallelujah. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. You know, you were created by Him and you were created for Him. See, He wants to express Himself through you today and through us today. Will we let Him express Himself through us? Or are we going to keep letting the world express itself through us? The flesh, the devil. See? Because we've been delivered from the power of darkness. We've been delivered from that power. And we don't have to give in to that anymore. No, no, no. And He is knowing us today. And He knows our heart cry. He knows your heart cry, Saint. And He loves you so. Hallelujah. And He is before all things. And by Him all things consist. Oh, hallelujah. See, He holds every atom, every molecule every single thing together Jesus does he's almighty God in the flesh today when you hear his voice harden not your heart as in the day of provocation I mean if you have to go back a few steps to to get back to where God had you and had you doing certain things whatever he had you the call upon your life and then you just stopped you said no I'm not gonna do that anymore you said, no, I'm not going to go that way anymore. It's too hard, Lord. Go back there and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Repent. Say, God, help me. You see, we have to do it. You know, I haven't been bringing out a whole lot of word lately because I'm telling you, I'm chewing on the cud. I'm telling you, I'm praying. I'm seeking God, you know, and maybe it doesn't seem like I'm seeking him, but I'm seeking him. I love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I want to know what that means more and more. I want to love him even more. See? Because he's worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise, honor, and glory. None of us are perfect. Jesus Christ in us is perfect. Jesus Christ of Nazareth in us by the Holy Spirit through the precious blood with the Father is perfect. And he's making room, hallelujah, in us so that he can express himself more and more. That we, being delivered from the power of darkness, have been translated into the kingdom of his dear 
son. Remember that today. When you hear people talking about being translated, you hear people talking about being caught up, God says today He wants to catch you up right now. Catch you up to the throne where we come to that mercy seat. And we say, oh God, you are worthy. We, we love you. We thank you, God. Thank you for your great mercy. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your great righteousness and judgment. Oh God, hallelujah. See. Oh, praise God. Father, seal this word to our hearts and spread it far and wide. And I know it will not return void for your word accomplishes what you send it forth to do. Search all of our hearts today, Lord. See if there be any wicked way in any of us. Lead us in the way everlasting, O God, and set a guard upon our mouths today. And let us love with your agape love, showing forth in agape, O Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.